teaching with me is Carlos or Diego. Um, we're both from Texas, Austin area. And as a bonus, Daniels is around here somewhere. He's going to hang out with us. He's in New Orleans in Cali. So we'll definitely allow him to throw some input in as well because he just recently came up with a struggle. So congrats to him. But we'll get him to have his input. So this is Combat Computer. We're going to talk a little bit about, um, first of all, thank you all for coming. I know it's not easy to get here. And uh, it's not easy for us to get here either. We uh, spend a lot of effort to get here. Uh, and we do that because we want you to get the most out of it. So the point I'm making is really be an interactive learner here. Ask a lot of questions. You know, involve involve yourself. Think about what you want to take home. Try to find like one or two things. You won't remember everything. Uh, it's just impossible. But try to uh, find one or two things. Or we'll watch the video later and you can, uh, you can get the rest of them. But think about those things and what you want to work on uh, as well. Along those lines, what I like to do uh, when I start all my classes is go through Introduce yourself real quick and let us know like one thing you're really hoping to learn from this class. I got material for this class for ages and ages. I could teach for four hours, but we only have like 90 minutes. So I want to make sure I cover, first of all, what you guys especially want to learn and uh, make sure we get that taken care of, all right? So we'll start over here, where your name, where you're from, one thing you're hoping to learn. Uh, I'm Astro, I'm from the RW. Uh, I'm mostly hoping to learn something I can teach to other people back in my home park personally. Okay, cool. I'm banging from the rising winds as well. I don't have any uh, idea what I'm wanting to learn. I'm just here to soak it up. There we go. Soak it up. Farley from the rising winds. Uh, just looking to diversify shot selections, transitions, other things like that. Okay. Uh, cool. That is from uh, Virginia. So Crystal Groves. Um, and I just want to learn whatever you guys got to teach. All right. Not for anything. Okay. Hi, I'm Screw, uh, also from the Rising Winds down in Kentucky. Um, combat Computer sounds like a class where, you know, we think about the motions, mechanics, all that stuff. Um, so it sounded like a good place to, to come to kind of get some of my thought train in line with something that's more efficient. Um, stop thinking too much. Start thinking about the right things, hopefully. Cool. Uh, my name's Hobie. I'm also from Virginia, so Crystal Groves. Um, I kind of have, like my own idea of how I want to fight, but like classes like these that focus a lot on the mental stuff, uh, they usually do a good job of helping me like gain perspective on like different things I hadn't thought of, so I just, I'm just trying to widen my perspective. Cool. I am Rook from the Nine Blades. Uh, that's Ottawa. It's far away. Ontario. <laughs> Ottawa's in Ontario. Um, and I'm here just to like learn what everyone else is doing, what I'm doing wrong, what we could be doing better, and like spreading up north as well. Okay, cool. Bird from the Nine Blades, and I want to learn what I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'm uh, Kiri from, sorry. oh, oh my gosh, do you want to go first? <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, um, Thrash from uh, Crystal Grove, just outside Baltimore. I um, just want to hopefully kind of figure out how to kind of hone my mental processes in terms of like learning how to break down fights and like because I, I always feel like I've not been great at analyzing fights either while they're happening or afterwards and I want to kind of work on that aspect of, of fighting. All right. My name's Kiri. I'm from uh, Air Duoth. Um, that's in Utah. I play Belle. Um, I just want to basically have a better mental focus and mental game and what I should be like really honing in on what I should just be kind of not focusing so hard on when it comes to mental processing and how I fight. Okay. I'm KLT. I'm from Emerald Glades in Ohio. Um, kind of like Thresh said, I'd just like to learn more about processing the fights after, win or lose, kind of why, what happened, and being able to break it down and process it. Cool. I'm Loki from Columbus, Ohio, and I feel pretty much the same way. Uh, I feel like I better better at doing that like post fight, like analyzing a fight afterwards, but transitioning that into like an in the moment while we're fighting thing is something I feel like I struggle with a little bit. So. Cool. Uh, I'm Xander from Winter's Edge. Uh, my big thing is two years ago this was the class that gave me the most power up over all the classes I took uh, because it completely changed the perspective of how I analyzed fights. So there's always more to learn from you guys, and that's why I'm back. All right, welcome back. I'm glad it helped. Uh, I'm Baidu, uh, I'm 
Dragon Spine um, out of Albuquerque. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the how to read, know what to try to get more information safely, and then yeah. Okay, use it. perfect. I'm Derek Groundguard, uh, Thorndor, Illinois. I'm looking to understand more about reading an opponent and how to gain them to get them to go where I want. I'm Kira. I'm from Dragon Spine, um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and um, I'm looking forward to like learning, or what I want to learn is um, I want to learn how to like analyze um, and in the moment, because I mean it's kind of like you said, like I'm, I can break it down and watch video afterwards and be like, well, I screwed that up, but I can't really do that in the moment very well. All right. I'm uh, Devry. I'm from Washington State. Uh, I want to learn how to plan, execute, and evaluate in a fight. Kind of. Oh, I fucked that up. Yeah. Okay. I'm Tyrell. I'm from Emerald Hills. And I'm pretty much here to just learn what we're Alright. And the aforementioned Damus, who, like I said, we'll get, we'll get into jumping and help us a little bit on a combat computer. So I'll have some good perspective, I'm sure. Um, you guys here for combat computer? Oh, no, I'm trying to find giant buttons and things. Oh. Okay, cool. This is this? Yes. 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 So, your <coughs> opponent yes. will tell you certain things, but you should pay attention to, to some basic things right away, right? When you, when you get into a fight, what are the things you think that you should look for immediately when you, when you approach someone? For the first time, if you don't know them, like, what are the things that you should put together to say, okay, this is this is kind of what this fighter is about. Any ideas? Where their hands are. Where their hands are, okay. What do you mean by where their hands are? Like, are they way up high, or is he keeping it kind of lazy and relaxed? Is, he, is it really, like, rigid? Is it... Okay, their guard position. What else? Their feet. Their feet, okay, that's very good. Are they looking forward or their right foot forward? You know, what's their stance? Uh, I guess their sensitivity to, like, pressure. You know, like, if you're kind of, uh, you know, trying to, you know, juke them or something like that, how flighty they are with that. Yeah, that's, a, they are. that's a little bit later, but yeah, that's a good point. We'll get to that one then. What else? Handedness. Handedness, there we go. Right-handed or left-handed, super, super important. Where they got their weight shifted. Where they got their weight shifted, yeah, so their stance. Again, if they're heavy on their front foot, if they're heavy on their back foot, you know, that tells you a lot. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anything else? That you guys where their attention is? Huh? Where their attention is. Because just because you're looking at them doesn't mean they're looking directly at you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, is that it? How to react Obviously. when you step towards them. Yeah, he kind of mentioned that, but yes, you probably didn't hear him. And yeah, that's the, kind of a little bit later. I'm talking about you, you step up and you see someone. Like, what are you looking for? Like, obvious bait baits, whether the shield's low or they're... Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can look at, look, kind of look at their guard and their weapon position. How about how long or how short their weapon is? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah? I think that's important. Yeah. How about how about how about what kind of foot gear they have on? You can tell if a fighter's serious if they have on like you know the fanciest, craziest, garbiest boots. Uh, probably not so good for footing, right? They may or may not be serious. It tells you something. It's not necessarily a hundred percent the truth. If they have on good gloves, like if you see gloves like this or like lacrosse gloves that people wear or like MMA gloves, this is a person that's serious about fighting. You know, if, if you see, you know, crazy core clothes, then maybe not. But maybe they are, but you're just gathering information, right? So that, that tells you something. Um, so definitely look at, look at that. You know, look at their swords. Are their swords, like, very decorative, crazy, curved, like, you know, falchion things that are likely going to be not as effective? Well, that probably tells you something, right? Not that you should ever underestimate anyone, but at least you get an idea. If you're looking at, like, you know, Someone who's like, you know, using a good length, like 34 to 36, probably ideal if you ask me, but, and they have on like good hand gear, and you can tell they have like on cleats or something like that, you're like, okay, this, this is someone who's serious about fighting. I've never seen them before, but they're probably someone who's serious about fighting. So right away, that gives you some information just looking at them. And then, yeah, you get into, okay, they're a left foot forward, you know, they have a board. How big is their board? 
Is it a punch or not? That's very important. You know, is it low strapped or not? Also important. You know, you can figure those things out too. Where is their default board position? These are things you can kind of pay attention to and figure out as you go along. Um, their grip on their sword, which no one I don't think talked about. If they're choked, if they're not choked, right? If I have a long, longer sword, but I spend the whole time choked, I don't really have a longer sword, right? I, mean, I could potentially get some range on it, but most of the time I'm taking away quite a bit of range if I stay choked all the time. And there's people who do that, they think it's a, a good way to block their hip. So it's just something to note about how they hold their, how they hold their sword. So right away, there's those things. Anything else? Did I miss anything you think? Maybe their garb. Their garb? Yeah. Company colors, at least. You come out and they, they, <laughs> if they have all the look that they fight with their, you know, in, in, in shorts and, and a shirt, these guys are just there to fight. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a, that's a fair point. Um, but there's a lot of people, uh, like this one right here, for instance, will have very nice garb on almost all the time and he'll more than likely wreck you. So, I'm but... Not. I'm certainly not saying wearing garb makes you shit. No, but. because you're also one of those people that wears, wears very nice garb. But if you do see someone wander out in a t-shirt, but they have on like pleats and yeah. nice gloves, then you should be like, uh-oh. I mean, you can tell, you can determine from that that they're not here for the RP. Yeah. They're here to fight. They're here for fighting, and they, and they yeah. do that all the time. Yeah, actually, um, to that end, I would say, uh, you know, garb may or may not be an issue, because some people have really nice garb, and they're really good fighters, and some people have very nice garb, and they're not. But there are a couple of things clothing-wise that I would look at, and there are a couple of things gear-wise that I would look at. Uh, if somebody's wearing company colors and it's something on like a jersey or something like on a hoodie, something where somebody's gone out and put you know, their own money towards something that's not even garb just to fly their colors and stuff like that, that's somebody who takes the game pretty seriously and spent a lot of time on it. They obviously feel, feel confident enough to have that. I mean, if I saw somebody with a jersey with their colors on it, I would be like, wow, that guy's really sunk some money into this. He must be pretty good. Yeah. Another thing is, it's not as standardized, but some people uh, have begun to recognize tech. You know, they can look at this and say, wow, that's a World War Sports sword, or wow, that's a uh, New Mexico sword, or wow, it's one of the uh, Black or, you know, ultralights, or whatever. People who go out and get those things, if you can recognize that, then that's obviously one measure of, you know, how committed they are to fighting, at least. Yeah, I really like ripstop covers is a very good indication of someone that's using, like, new tech and is down with kind of the new meta. Um, even though this sword doesn't have a ripstop cover, the other ones do. Big buffers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like, yeah, Bane has a company that does that. Uh, Jamie does as well. World of Sports does as well. But the ripstop covers help because one of the requirements for a shot in new amp guard is the audible piece. Well, ripstop cover is almost always going to give you the audible piece. So, you know, it's one, it's lighter. Two, it helps with that audible piece. So, yeah, paying attention to equipment. I think we've established Did anybody it. mention height? Height. 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 Yeah. Yes, yeah, height one. is very that important. Nice. Um, we, we talked about the, the length <laughs> of a weapon, how tall or short someone is, will give you uh, some idea of their range. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so we've assessed our person. Now we want to gather like a little bit more information on them, right? We, we see him. We're like, this dude's probably pretty serious about fighting. Now I want to figure out like what he's going to do, but I want to do that safely, right? So something you can do is just give him a little like rocker step, like a basketball term, or, or like a jab step is another term. Like, just hit him with something like that. You know, move a little bit close, but now where they can actually get a good shot on you, so just give him a just like that. You see, we're, just, we're not moving anywhere. Just give him a jam, and if they go, well, you know right away. Okay, here's a back pedal fighter, right? Like this is. This is what I'm dealing with as someone who's going to back up. And you should be relatively happy about that because generally that's good for you. But, uh, but yeah, give them that jam if they do that. Now, if you give them that jam and they stand there and look at you, you should be concerned. Because <laughs> that shows you that someone knows what they're doing, right? They're like, this guy's not in range. He's not going to be able to do anything to me. He's just stepping to gather information. I'm not going to give him any information. Or I don't need to react to that. It's not something that, that matters to me, right? So there's that. You know, if they just tense up like that, you jam and they just go like that, you know, they're not probably going to move if they're going to lock their guard in tight. That's also beneficial information. Because, you know, when you're talking about I want to be able to formulate openers and I want to analyze the combat as it's fighting, I mean as it's happening, 
You want to start the fight from like here. If I know Royce and I are about to fight, we're going to tap swords. Maybe I'll tap and then I'll step back for a minute and then I'll like put it in the jam. And then I'll step this way to see how he's going to react to that, right? Like use your movement outside of where you're actually fighting to understand what they're going to do. If I'm trying to get an angle on him and I'm moving laterally and he doesn't really react to that, well that tells me I can get an angle on him and move laterally and I don't have to use much trickery to do that. I just have to move a little bit and he's not going to react. As I get closer, if he's always trying to maintain a certain distance, right, come to me. If he's coming at me, right, and I'm doing this, I'm doing this, well, you know they're going to maintain a certain distance, they're trying to maintain a certain distance. That's probably a distance that's advantageous to them. <coughs> so you need to understand that. How they walk away from you, right, not just jumping back, but how, if I'm, come right back in close. If I'm moving at him, and he's just doing that, see how he did, like, the same pattern three times in a row? Well, that's good. Now I understand how he's going to move, and I can do something off of that, right? Um, and he's kind of going straight back. And I kind of get a sense of this timing, too, right? Like, if I'm, if I'm coming out of it, it's this, it's this, and it's this every time I take a step. Where do you think the points are that I can potentially execute something? Lips will take that back step. Yeah, exactly. When he puts his weight on his front foot and he's going to step back, he has now made it so that he's stuck for that brief split second of time. All of his weight has come onto his front foot. Until he puts that back foot down, he's in, he's in trouble. At least he can't he can't react except for to maybe move further back than he was going to. Right? He can't come forward. Right? It's impossible. It's literally impossible for him to come forward at that point. So how they're going to move out of you coming towards them is super important. How they're going to advance on you. Right? If I come in. I'm going to fight Royce with a tap, and I step in, and I immediately start stepping back a little bit, and get that advance, and I start pressing, how he's going to back up. Backing up and advancing, how those things happen, both of those things that I did were safe. Like, there wasn't very easily shots for him to hit from there, and if he did decide to throw, I think I would be in a, in a good, good position to defend, right? So, right away, before we've struck a blow, as it were, right, we've gathered some information. We know... How they're going to react if, if we press a little bit, you know, kind of from the GM, we understand what they're going to do, where their default defense is going to go, right? I kind of talked about it, but it's something, if I come at him and I make sure I'm just where he's going to and I step in, if he leaves this like that, that tells me, okay, that's pretty much what his default defense is going to be. He's not going to shift. He's not going to, he's not going to try to slip my shots. I can make a plan based on that, based on how he, how he decided to stand tight inside of the pocket, right? Um, what else on that? Do you guys have ideas before I just keep going? Because like I said, I can go How high his guard is. How high his guard is again, yeah. Where his, where his hand position is. Yeah, he didn't really move it when we stepped in, right? He left it right where it was. He's like, this is my guard. I'm committed to it. You know, it tells you one of two things. He's in trouble because I can hit past that guard. Or he's comfortable with that guard and he has reactions off of that that, that, uh, that he has planned. And so now we need to kind of figure out what those reactions are. So what do you think we do next if we need to figure out what those reactions are, right? We saw that we rockered at him. He kind of stood in guard. How do, we, how do we go about gathering some more information? Again, I'm not super comfortable throwing anything yet. In my mind, I'm still kind of gathering information. So what do you, you think? Can, you can step, you know, left and right. You can, if, you're not, if you're talking about not comfortable throwing at all, or throwing shots trying to hit him, you can throw safe shots at him where you're not intending to hit him, but he can't hit you in return. Yeah, yeah exactly. We could throw we could throw some of that. Faint. There we go, we could faint, right? So he did pretty good. I came at him, he's like, I'm gonna be pretty committed to this, right? Now this this to me tells me that he really kind of wants me to throw out that arm so he can probably hit the shoulder. That's my guess like right away is what he's gonna to want to do. Even without doing anything but this I'm going to guess, like, if I throw it that arm, his answer is going to be here at my shoulder. So, I would want to fill that out a little bit, right? So, I would kind of act like I'm going to come in range, slip out of range a little bit, exactly like Bane said, and then pull that arm and then pull it right back, right? And see if he reacts to that. And if he does, then we know he wants to throw it the shoulder. If he doesn't, then, then we're like, okay, he's waiting for something else, or he's willing to wait until he thinks the moment is right to throw, but he's also going to let me throw it, right? So 
So I throw his arm, there's no reaction. Third, no reaction, right? Well, where would our plane go from there, do you think? I threw, I threw kind of at a hip, there wasn't a ton of reaction. I kind of just hit a hand or an arm. Shield side. Shield side, that would be your plane. Yeah, just, just step that way. See if he moves his guard, if he rotates or steps. So here and then here. Okay, and he did that. That's, that's a very good thing to do. I'd be like, okay, I gotta be careful. I think his hip is way out there. That's the thing I'm thinking of right now. Okay, I can't see he, he, hold, he holds his hand up. He's comfortable standing in the pocket. I think I'm going to hit his hip. That's the plan we've put together so far, just from what we've seen. But we saw that, one, so far what we've done to, to gather that information is this, right? We did this, and we threw this. Nothing, nothing too dangerous, right? You can even throw this kind of like that. It's even less dangerous, right? Let's see if he's going to do anything. And he kind of stands tall, but he doesn't want me to get good angles on him, so he slips, so that's good. We can utilize that. Um, so, yeah. What else in that situation? We're still gathering information, right? We still haven't committed. We haven't risked anything, really. You know, we've gathered, I think, a lot of valuable information, right? Height fake. Huh? Uh, height change fake. Height change fake. Fake. Just, just change your... Oh, you want to see what he... Yeah, so... So again, like a rock, instead of just a rocker, you can go, right? Now, I, now, okay, see, now he's, he's, his answer is to sink, right? So if I act like I'm going to low stab him, he sinks down, well, that's, that's another piece of information that, again, we didn't risk anything for. And yeah, exactly right. You can hit board side shoulder. Um, so, so, okay. So that's all the stuff. Let me rewind all that. But that's all stuff we gathered all safely, right? You want to know the best thing you can actually do if you really want to gather information on someone? Watch them for like 15 minutes. Instead of just jumping out of the ditch field and going, ah, I'm super eager. I spent, you know, I got on a flight and spent five hours getting here. I'm going to jump in and go fight. If, you, if there's someone you know that you want to beat, and you haven't seen them fight before, but I've heard about this dude, I want to beat him. Watch him for like 15 minutes. And even if you've seen his videos online, like people still will change things that they're fighting and they might fight a different way. But generally they'll be patterned in in a day, right? Like how they're going to fight that day. They're kind of got the stuff that they're comfortable with that day. And you watch him for like 15 or 20 minutes. The man teaching right over there, Peter the Quick, real quick, a little story on this. When I first met him, uh, Spinthrift brought him out to an SKA a long time ago. And... He was wrecking people. Like, I, I showed up and spins all in my face. Hey, D, look at this dude over here, man. I brought him out. Check this dude out. And I'm like, okay. I'm watching him. He's wrecking people. Man, it's pretty, it's pretty good. He's doing well. And Harry's sitting by me. I watched him for about 15 minutes. And I was like, okay. And I said, Harry, hey, Harry, watch this. And then I went on there and just destroyed him. But he had no reads on me, right? He's never seen me before. I've seen him. And I already formulated a plan just because he just from watching him fight for 15, 20 minutes. Whereas if I would have went out there and just started swinging at him without a plan, the results wouldn't have been nearly as good. You know, so I'm just telling you, that 15 minutes of just watching you while you're stretching, getting your stuff on, you know, getting your water situated, whatever, super, super valuable. You gather a lot of this information that we're gathering, like, you know, it's still good and valuable, but you can get that ahead of time if you just watch. So spend some time watching, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I know you want to get out there and throw, but... Like, learn, understand, right? Go ahead. No, I would say specifically, if you're seeing somebody and you're watching somebody, I know that some of you might be coming in here and say, well, I don't know what to look for. Um, if you're seeing somebody fight, the first things I would always look at, if I'm looking at somebody to see what, they are, what they're doing ahead of time, I always say, what do they like to open with? Because chances are, whatever they open with and it's successful with somebody else, they're going to try that on you. So that's one thing you can automatically get down. You know, what do they like to open with? And then you've got to figure out how wide is their shot selection. You know, if they are just, you know, they love to hit the cross, love to hit the cross, love to hit the cross, they pretty much live over there, then that also gives you value for information. Those are the kinds of things you, could, you should look for, how they open and how they pattern themselves. Yeah, absolutely. When, when you're watching people, like understanding what their, what their default opener is, is huge. You know, people have, people have like two or three things they're really comfortable with. They don't vary from them a ton. And you can even watch. I mean, what the things you should, you should really build off of that is like, what happens when people give them different looks, right? And that's the thing about watching them for 15 minutes. It's not like just, oh, I watched them fight like three times and now I got a good idea. You'll see them fight, hopefully, various people and various looks, and then you'll get some idea of like, you know, 
uh, how exactly how they're going to open and then what they do off of that, right? How they step off of a, a shot is important. If they step off of a shot, if I throw high cross and then I immediately throw high cross and I just keep throwing high cross, first of all, God help me. But second of all, <laughs> like that's very valuable, valuable information for you, right? Because you know this person loves it, you know, but maybe they're pretty successful with it. But I think I can take advantage of that, and I really want want them to do that. So I want to just get into the touch of range. Let them, let them throw high cross, and then counter, right? If, you, if I get him just throw high cross at me, and I throw, and I throw back at him, but off, and I get my board over here, right? Classic art bond, right? Easy. So things like that when you're formulating a plan, right? And your, your plans, when we get to that, let's, let's get to that a little bit later. So yeah, when you're watching them, watch for, watch for their default openers, watch where they're going to go, and start thinking about what you're going to do. The most important thing, I think, in, in that space, and then we probably need to start drilling here a little bit, get y'all moving, it's cold, at least to me. But uh, you have to understand what your toolkit is while you're evaluating their toolkit, right? If, if you're like, oh, you know, I could spin shot that guy, except if I don't have a spin shot, well, that's not going to be helpful, right? You've you got you you to you use the tools you have and you understand the tools you have. If, if, if uh, sword side hip's not a great shot for you, then sword side hip's not the answer that you're looking for, right? Um, you should work on it, but if it's not the answer for the time, it's not the answer, then, you know, maybe a cross is an answer, maybe a, a, a flat, whatever. Just understand, you have to use the tools that you have. So when you're evaluating someone and you want to make a plan, make a plan that plays to your strengths and limits their strengths, right? If, 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 he, was, if he was high cross, if he was very high cross centric, I would probably move right a lot, right? So come over here a little bit. If he's going to throw high cross on me and I'm moving right, I'm already putting my defense where he wants to throw. Over and over again, he can throw high cross all day and I can wait until I'm ready to throw it back at him because I'm moving my targets all the time, right? Sword side hip's the same way. If he wants to throw a sword side hip on me over and over again and I'm moving, right? My shield's already there. I don't have to worry about this, right? I'm already just moving my shield, taking that angle away. And if he really commits to it, right, he's going to die. So understand that and play into your strengths, all right? Uh, what else? The only thing I'm saying is that uh, I was going to say is if you notice in somebody, what, what James was talking about, you know, play to your strengths, don't play to something that you can't do. For example, if you're seeing somebody fight and you see them actually losing to somebody because somebody is able to pull off that spin or is able, is able to get into this tummy or able to get into the shoulder, you might say, man, I wish I could throw that spin because that spin's really been working. Don't tell yourself, well, what i got to do is throw the spin because it's something you're not comfortable with just because it works for somebody else, which is somebody else's strength is not going to be something that you're going to pull off. Instead, what you should be taken away from that is, that's where he has an opening. That's where he has a weakness, that's a place that I should hit, and I need to think of what I'm good at that I can land in that area. Same kind of thing. And when you're making your initial plans, too, no one that's a programmer starts your first project as making Skyrim. So you have to start very small. Work on the observational skills. See what comes back when you when they leave it to you. Don't focus too much and too hard about what you're doing yourself. Um, but also said, like your toolbox, if you know you can't throw a shot, workshop that later. Get a friend, go spar, work on that, try to dip into that hip, whatever it takes. But you're going to be building files on people, and you want to make sure that your stuff is correct, and then start observing the best you can. Yeah, absolutely. And what you want to build off of this information is, like you said, you're not writing Skyrim, but you want like a two-step three-step plan at the most, but I generally say, I generally recommend, if you haven't planned before, you don't want to go into like this elaborate five-step plan about, you know, first I'm going to like throw this stab fake and then I'm going to faint high, twitch back low, faint high one more time and then throw a spin. Like, it's probably not going to work. You're probably going to lose track somewhere in step two and three, right? I mean, what you really want is, I'm going to step right. Uh, a couple times on his board side. I'm going to faint real hard board side. I'm going to come back sword side hip. Right? Boom. Two-step plan. And remember, you're never done until you're back to defensive posture. So it can't be, I'm going to come here and I'm going to throw sword side hip and that's done. It's, I'm going to throw here sword side hip, back to full guard. Right? And then I'll have to I'll reassess the situation. But when you go in, like have 
two, three step plan, and that's it. And, uh, <coughs> and execute on that. So, at this point, go ahead. Well, if I can't throw close, so the spin is a good example. If I can't throw the spin or whatever, I can still fake it. Yeah, for like sure. if I know that somebody just ate somebody in that quadrant with that shot, I don't need to throw it. I just need to be able to fake it. Yeah, and as long as they don't know that you can't throw it, then they'll be. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work once! <laughs> to piggyback on, <laughs> on the planning thing, the longer and more complex your plan is, the harder it is to go back and review what worked and what didn't. Yeah. So if you're seven chains in, you can't remember what step three was, well, step four through seven were complete waste. So work on those small two and three step plans, and as soon as you've done, back up and evaluate. Did you execute according to your plan? How did they react to your plan? And what are you going to do next time to change it up? Yeah, and then the last important thing to remember before we start like, uh, doing like about evaluation of people and, and formulating plans is when you're thinking about yourself and what worked and what didn't work, the worst thing you can do is go, oh, I just have to be faster. Like, this shot always works for me, I just wasn't fast enough, right? And you try it over and over and over again. Go, ah, I just need to be fast enough. Just not fast enough today. What's the definition of insanity? Anyone knows? Doing the same thing over and over again. It's over and over again, right? Yeah. It's, uh, I had a discussion, I don't know if you know Ash, but uh, we have a discussion sometimes where it's like, whenever a uh, game ends, you reset, and you know nobody died on the other side of the ditch, and you say, try harder. Uh, we don't like that, right? Because that, that insinuates like just do the same thing harder. Is just try try different. Yeah. Than anything else. Yeah. Um, Carlos here used to have a struggle with that against me all the time, which is probably why he's laughing. Because he would be like, oh, I can get that shot on you. I'm like, it's really not a good shot to throw on me. Like, I just gotta be fun. No, it's that's not it. There's better shots, right? There's, there's better choices to make. And that's what you gotta do. You gotta be able to be able to evaluate and go, oh, I just need to. Do something different like this. This isn't going to work, or even if it is going to work, it's not going to work that often. So let's, let's figure out something else. Let's take a better approach, right? From a learning perspective, you can call that negative learning. Negative learning is when you learn something that stops you from being able to do something new or prohibits you from learning something that you should. That you, and nothing is worse for that than success, believe it or not. Because uh, you know, this is a story that James told way back when, and it just happens to be a player here. Um, there was an SKBC a while back in New Mexico. And I felt that that was one of my strongest SKBCs. I was going out there and I was laying waste and I was feeling really good about myself. And I was like, oh, yeah, man, I'm the, I'm the boss here. And then I went out to go fight PTQ. And he was just eating my lunch. I mean, I was getting no success. And then, so I was just kind of, I was just getting into my head. Man, I've got to deliver my shots better. i got to be quicker. It's been working all freaking day, all weekend. Why is it not working right now? And James was there and he just walked up. And he's like, uh, hey, Carlos, you know what you should do? And I'm like, what? He says, well, he always, he's, he's a hand matcher. Uh, he's always putting this arm out. And he told me how to change my strategy. And then just by telling me that, I got my win ratio up to about 50-50. And that was just after a couple of minutes of talk. And that was because I changed what I was doing. So I can tell you, you might convince yourself that all you need to do is be better, but you're just fooling yourself. Yeah. Yep. Definitely be willing to self-evaluate all the time. You know, just because that's your strength against most people, there are people that, uh, that are uh, accustomed to that, and and they'll they'll have a much better uh, time defending it. Like throwing throwing sword side hip on wheel people, especially the ones that fight Isaac and Eric all the time, might be a little difficult. It doesn't mean you can't throw it. You just need to be aware that it's something that they defend against all the time. Throwing five one twos or backspins at people out of Austin, you know, we might be used to seeing those a lot. So. You gotta be careful about it and understand that those are things that we see a lot. And you know, you gotta be careful. So, a couple of volunteers, what we're gonna do is have people fight. We're gonna kind of watch them. First of all, I'll realize I don't really care who wins or loses. So don't worry about going super hard in the paint. Worry about everyone learning. You know, you can fight, fight for sure. Um, but we're trying to get a pattern, understand what people are gonna do. Um, and do some evaluation, right? So don't, don't go crazy. The fry, who else? I'll fight. All right, Xander. Three fights.
if you hadn't gone, gone down that leg. <laughs> One more. Alright, what do we see? Stay out there. Really low drops and stabs. Yeah, those uh, guys fight really low. Turning like their whole body over to stab up under the shield. Yeah, they like to level thing. For sure. What First else? two fights. He threw a uh, lower onside quadrant, I think, every time he hit. And you were fighting with sword foot forward. In this third fight, you swapped it, and I think you did much better at blocking that quadrant. And he had to go up top. What did you guys see? Uh, we are both kind of sword foot forward and kind of uh, almost trying to uh, gauge the distance for kind of the explosive explosion in. I mean, I was just trying to poke for openings, and uh, on the first two, definitely realized his guard, was, guard changes were quicker than I anticipated, <laughs> and got my cookies eaten for it. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys didn't really have a lot of shop variety. You guys were pretty much just throwing for, like, sword side. I didn't see anything, like, over the top, or, like, butt wrap, anything like that. There wasn't a lot of fakes. There wasn't a lot of fakes. Yeah, so, these guys pretty much tell their story. And that they're going to just throw the shots. So far, we've only seen three fights, but there wasn't a lot of fakes, um, and there was a lot of sword side attack. There wasn't a lot of board side attack. So, you know, that's very useful information to formulate a plan, for sure. We won't plan yet, that comes later. Uh, next two.
Uh, so another thing, and I, I think this kind of just goes into this, is we were in the class before, and this goes into the computing thing, and I saw you do that shot earlier today, and I knew you were going to do it. So, oh, like it, it yeah, builds right into that. Yeah. Like I knew you were, like I was like, yeah, I saw you do that. And then I was like, I bet he's probably going to try to throw that shot again. So that goes a little bit into the computing. Absolutely. It's like, you know, picking that up and, you know, using it to gauge and process who you're fighting. Especially if he does something leading into it. Like yeah. if, you, if you noticed, I, would, I didn't see the class earlier, but if you noticed, like, oh, when he's going to throw that shot, he does this and this. Exactly. Yeah. Now you have a read on him. And when he goes to set that up later on in the ditch, you can punish him for it 100% yeah. of the time. <laughs> they both, when they first stepped in, were gauging each other and then and keeping their shields close so they were having high defense. <coughs> Neither of them were really manipulating each other's equipment whatsoever. So they were just holding it there and not like pushing any kind of shield work or putting any kind of feint or baits or anything. And as you came in, you were like almost, it seemed like to me you were trying to reach a little bit for certain shots because you were uncomfortable with the idea of how to breach his defense while he was able to look for the opportunities on you more easily. Yeah, so from my perspective, you moved your board a lot. Yeah. You shouldn't move your board a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's right. the whole reason that's he got you with that. He got you with a, a faint down into an over. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, your shield just flew down. Yeah. Like, Flew down. Yeah. So, so you got to be careful about that. You know, like again, slide to the right. If you're worried about that hip, move to the right. Or secondarily, if you want, you can block with your sword. Um, but throwing your board down is an easy way to get killed. Now, and we'll talk about this later. But if you're out of range, he does that. You act like you're going to throw your board down, and the next time he goes to throw that, and when you don't, yeah, that's a different story. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that Something else too. It looked like he was really pushing the aggression on the fight and keeping you on the defense. Yeah. You look like you were really trying to wait for your moment to have something happen, whereas he was trying to create a moment. And that's what gave him a better margin of success against you. I saw it that, uh, on you, anyway. I didn't see you closing a whole lot. I thought you were waiting for that one big shot that was right. You were just waiting for that moment. You, you did a fairly good job of uh, range control. Yeah. So far as I, 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 I can see that you live in that yellow area. You're not a closer. You wanted to sit there and pick them from range. And you were getting those shots in. And you were making it. He didn't aggress until the very last bout. Wanted the big yeah. shield, uh, shield sword stab. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Next two. I'll go. Here we go. I'm getting cold. I'm getting cold. Yeah, cool. Yeah, And 
then it was kind of you kind of got you guys gauged each other from that first match, yeah. and that I think that's you know that was a big thing. Instead of gauging it right at the front, you know, and, you know, checking here and there, you guys gauged from the first exchange and then went from there. What tendencies did we see? Uh, I'd say both guys were definitely willing to scrap. Like neither of them seemed really timid, so I don't know if, um, if it's someone I would necessarily like really close on real fast and engage them. I might kind of play it safe and figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, what else? Uh, Kelty likes to live like down here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he's very patterned down there. You know, he liked to throw feints down there if he wasn't going to do anything. Like, it was almost like he wouldn't do anything without going under his shield first, which is not great. Uh, I'm not saying you can't ever do that. In fact, it's a fine feint, especially since you have a punch. But if everything stems from that as an open, and a great one, he sags three times, right? So yeah, sure. I'm, I'm keeping that in mind. But three times, you're. In three times, your sword probably went under your shield like that about ten times. So that tells me that there's a lot of that going on. So that's something you can figure out how to uh, make a plan and exploit, right? If someone's going to always do that, then there are ways to exploit that, right? Because they're stuck there for a second. I noticed uh, something about myself when he was doing that. I saw them coming over here a lot. Uh, normally I fight with like hand right up here on the shoulder, keep a nice open sword arm. Um, but I saw all these coming, and I like... I, I noticed at the end there, right after the third round, I was like, my shield drifted down to here. Yeah. Like, it definitely moved it over a lot. Yeah. Which I'm sure is why he does that. So, you know. Um, like, a lot of times what I, what I try to do is invite the rush kind of thing. I have a yeah. small board, let's see, easy pick-ins. I try to get the board to come over here with the rush. Board goes here, this goes over his shoulder, and I finish with a cross hit. Yeah. That's like the goal, ideally. But the yeah. first one we saw that he just jumped on me, and I was flat-footed completely, and... I pay for it, you know. Yeah. You we also, we just fought like not that long ago. Yeah. At that tournament, yeah. so like we kind of already gauged each other a little bit. Yeah. Which is why we maybe jumped into it quicker than. Yeah. Than the other I kind of wondered about that. Yeah. 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 So variety for you is important. So what 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 what's going on is you have something that works for you, and I bet it works for you pretty often. Right? Yeah. yeah. But the problem is like a smart person, and I guess I should have said this in the class. I don't really want to teach you how to outthink and outschool newbies. You don't need my help doing that. Like I want to teach you how to like game plan and outthink and out chess match warlords. That's who you want to do it on anyway, right? Or at least people that are up and coming. Anyone can do it on a new person. It's not that hard. So, you know, when we start talking about don't do something as patterned as that, it's because they're going to figure out how to punish you for it. And you know. I guess just a little preview of the stuff that I would do. I'd be like, I would buy into your feint a little bit and punish you for throwing it on me like later. You know, you know I'd be like, oh yeah. Like, we, we fight and you go on your board and I go, oh fine, I'll fight. And I think about the thing, I go like this, then I step in. Yeah, well exactly what you want to do to me. I'm like, oh yeah, I know what you want to do. You want to go high. Well, I'm not stupid. But now I've made you less than optimal right? because I used exactly what you want to do against you. So you, you want to have a lot more variety, you know, a lot more places that you can go. So something to be aware of. All right, next two, and then we're going to kind of switch a little bit. We won't have a chance to get to everyone for this part, but I want, because I want us to get to everyone for the next part. It's more, it's more uh, fun for everyone, and I think it's really important to you, so. Not that this part's not important, but. Everyone has to go.
to you guys, although it's concrete, so you're absolutely welcome. To play <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just establish it with your opponent ahead of time. Um, because some people, such as my friend here, really likes to throw the leg shot. So I think that's the first thing we saw. I'll just steal that one from you because it's too obvious. Well, um, what what else did we see? Um, they were faking a lot and throwing a lot of <coughs> just like like they were throwing a shot but at nothing. Like it wasn't it wasn't a dump shot. It wasn't into the opponent. It wasn't just a hand or, or a pump fake or anything like that. It was literally like like a like a smoke a space like a saver. Yeah, like yeah. a smoke screen. Like yeah, it's it in smoke. it's in the space between you and me, yeah. but it's not threatening. Yes. Um, a lot of that. They did a lot of leaning, a lot of up and down, yeah. uh, changing of, of elevation and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, what was your name? Loki. Loki. Uh, do you play Bill Dag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you, before the first fight even started, I looked at you from the Winnegas to the PD Shield. I was expecting a lot of high crosses and like TikToking and stuff, and that only really happened in the first fight for the most part. Uh, you had a little more variety than that, but uh, that was initially what I was thinking as soon as you walked up. I got. You. I do have a problem with that too anyway. Uh, I felt like like my initial thought right off the bat, like even at the first, I felt like he was trying really aggressively to like control the pace. because um, you would like step in and I felt like you were almost too close to him. Like you'd step in, you'd try to do something, you'd try to figure something out. And the all three fights I felt like you were trying to do that and like oh, yeah, he was, he was just he was just picking apart like he would pick his moment. Yep. Ra rather than like you aggressing something on him. Very which might account for the large shots. Very shield, which which makes that shield. shield side shoulder pain. Yeah. And I noticed when you went down in the third fight you threw twice to that shoulder and you got absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. You you'd have gotten it if it was a wrap. But it's a heat. So no go. Any sort of just in reaction to anything just in the small little bit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Prior to that too, you really put no pressure on that board side. Yeah. So you limited your offense to only a sword side. Really side. no idea how to find one of those things. Well, you didn't, you didn't try to hop right. You didn't do a lot of stuff. Yeah. So really, it just kind of funneled you into his game plan. What? Well, there's a tendency, especially on this side, other than just throwing at the leg. What else did we see? A lot of sword side jumps. A lot of sword side jumps, but he level changed a lot. We talked about that, but what he did to level change was this, right? He bent at his knees, very heavy on his knees, which limits your movement for that period of time. So that's something to be aware of. If someone's going to level change like that, it's something we can punish. So what we're doing here is we're gathering information, right? So we know on him, if he's going to do those level changes, do you think it's possible that we could go somewhere that would invite him to do the level change? Meanwhile, our plan being that we're going to capitalize on that in some way, shape, or form, right? Like, if you know he's going to do a step and then drop into this level change and throw at this lead leg, right, do you think possibly there's an easy way we could punish that? Either you could leave your leg out and bait it, or you could feign a low shot on him to see if he'll level change down and then throw high. Right. Keep in mind, just think, think about ways we can punish that for later, right? Uh, but you did a lot of that, again, we want to be careful with our tendencies, right? Even things like I do this three times and then like I get ready to fight, you know, or or I'm constantly doing this with my sword, even inside a range, or I'm constantly doing this with my sword inside a range. Those are all things that are very punishable. I haven't seen anyone do anything quite that bad this time around, but um, definitely be aware of things like that because you can get punished for those. Uh, next two. Keep moving. We have a big class. Yeah, go ahead. I think my shield's too small for you. You can make a motherfucker to hide behind that shield. Don't be shy to step up. You're taking this class for a reason. When it knows you look at you and make fun of your win loss record, you're trying to prove, so don't mess this up. Let's go, Thaddeus. I think those are your Uh, yeah. I put my glove in. I was up there. You get your first name. Slap the glove. You need this when you get the offer strap. Dude, you got your strap. Yeah. I didn't even need strap. I'll put it on the ghost. This is heavy. Oh, you bitch. <laughs>
we see. Well, Bane, that first fight, the first thing he did was that pump, and he immediately he, like, jumped back. Yeah, so what's the ideal thing you think to do when someone throws a step at you that you don't really have to react to? Just do Yeah, actually smiling at them is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly what I do. Just smile at them. Pretty funny. But yeah, don't don't do anything. Smiling at them's like, oh crap. That's generally what they'll think. Uh oh. So let's talk about that for a second because there's other things, right? Um, what this gentleman did, a lot of this. If you just smile at them, perfect, right? Um, you know, people that do like this kind of stuff, that kind of throw out your sword hand a little bit. Yeah, don't let them just move in on you where they get in good range, but if they're doing it from a bad range, then you know, kind of smile at them. Don't change anything. Just let them know, right? This, I'm not worried about that. You're not close enough. Smile at them, right? Don't move until you have to. Or feed them false information, right? That's that would be the if, if you can say, oh, yeah, I'm very afraid of that. Ugh. Then again, you can punish people because people are... Sometimes too smart for their own good, and you sound smart them because you go, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to do that with my shield. The next time when you're in range, and then when they're in range, hold your shield tight, twitch it a little bit, like, just like that. They go like this, you go, and then they'll go to throw because they don't think. They just think, oh, that's what happened last time, so it's certainly what's going to happen this time, and then you take advantage of it. So just remember, be very cognizant of what you do at all times. Self-awareness is super important in this. You know, you have to know yourself. Before you can really even worry about know your enemy, so understand and be very cognizant. Don't do, don't give away information basically for that. What else do we see? Every time you swing, you drop your shield way down. a little bit of the opposite. While he was in the yellow range, he was taking tons of little steps. But then to get into the green range, he was taking the large explosive steps. And I believe like you were taking the little steps to kind of play with uh, Bane's perception of the ranges. But then when you were in range, Bane would take the one big step and close and take a shot. Uh, in most of the exchanges, Bane usually leads with his board. Like he'll actually push it out a little bit. Um, and that can really cut off a lot of angles for you. But that also opens up angles for him. So like when he would come forward, he would kind of push his board out. Even when he was doing like the reverse wraps and stuff, he would, he would kind of push it out. And those create angles here. But when he does that, it also cuts out other stuff. It's just things to kind of look at when he's, you know, kind of trying to get in and grind on you. Alright, who hasn't gone? Is Jelty? That's real sad. Let's get y'all done and then we do this next part. We won't get to everyone for the next part, but we'll get to a lot. It's important that everyone see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just saw the whole spam. Take it. What is it left? Kira? Who else has the gone? Uh, this guy over here is doing other right. stuff. Alright, I guess y'all got to see Royce when he's any dumb for me. We're seeing all of them right now. I would love to do my gun death. That would be great. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You gotta pay for that.
call, I'm sorry. No, it took me a second because it was supposed to be a call. Alright, what did we see? Hands like extending way out there beyond the shield. I think, not, not on all fights, but I, I saw both fighters at, at least one point in one of the first two fights where they stick your arm out for a shot and then had like a really long delay before you could get your arm safely like, back around your shield. Um, I saw a broadcast from each of you, you where you were leaning over, definitely looking for that, his, uh, his shield side, just like leaning way over into it. Because you knew, you knew you had to get around the shield, but I just feel like you were broadcasting that to him too. Um, and then you, you had one of these, it got her, but you, had, you, you tilted your sword back here and then threw over the top. Um, and I feel like there was not a whole lot, like you couldn't really go for, for here or that wrap. You pretty much had to shoot over the top on that shot. You've got a thing for that shot. You use it every single time. Yeah, actually, that was something I was going to point out. You opened with it twice. You won with it. You hit with it twice at least. Maybe three. You set it up different. But it was that same shot. That's that what do you do with this when you're actually going to throw it? Hmm. Like, is it that only a fake, or do you actually do something with that? Oh, with this? Yeah. Butt wrap, maybe? Not often. Uh, so, just a little bonus for you. Yeah, thank you. You're in my class. Just. Hand, right? Oh sure, and that, that hand. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the reason why is because you want this setup, and it's a beautiful one. I use this at the dojo a lot. Just pop here, throw your hand down like that. As soon as they drop it, exactly like you do, then you can just throw it sure. The, the under, sorry, the under the wrist is yeah. trying to go for that. Yeah. I do that every morning, not yeah. as often as I should. Yeah, so that that setup is real solid for that. Because if you never do anything with that, no one's ever going to blame right. that paper. They shouldn't. They should look at you like that's stupid. You never do anything with that. I'm not going to worry about. It. Because this is something I didn't talk about earlier, but you spend probably 80% of your amp guard career fighting the same people all the time, right? So true. So if you're doing that, the tendencies and patterns and patterns and habits of smart people, I fight somewhere between six and seven sword nights in any given night, like all the time. So, you know, this is important for me especially, but it's important for anyone. Like, you can't just throw the same kind of information. I'm constantly changing my game, constantly evolving, changing the stuff I do. Uh, one, one week of fighting will be completely different than the next week. Generally speaking, I try to throw different stuff out. I'll, I'll lead differently. I'll change stances. You know, I'll change opener. All kinds of stuff because I have to. Otherwise, I'll get punished for it. And you know, you have to go to the back of the line if you lose in Austin. <laughs> we you won't be to stay in the front. But uh, but uh, yeah. So. If you're going to throw feints like that, it'll work. It worked. But, you know, you fight it for two or three weeks and you're doing that all the time, you never do anything with it, it ain't going to work anymore. So you're like, I don't know, that's stupid. I don't need really to worry about that. So, you know, actually make your threats meaningful. I mean, you know, you can't just always threaten and never do anything. Even if it never hits them, at least they know. At least have to be aware of it. It's something to throw. Right? Cool. Something that's, I noticed. Uh, she tended to have her sword in almost an almost continuous loop. It, it paused from time to time, mm -hmm. but it was a pretty steady loop, like something you might be able to time. Yep. What else? Uh, I felt like, you, I think in one of the first fights, you just opened, like trying to hook that shoulder. And I, I think you recognized right off the bat that, like, she kept her equipment kind of here, but she was like, I think she was too like turned forward to like, so this shoulder looked juicy, <laughs> but you didn't hit that shot right off the bat. And I think like, because you missed that, like I, I wanted you to throw for that shoulder <laughs> way more. Cause you ended up, I think in that second fight, you threw sword side a lot more. And I was like, man, you need to come back up here. Um, but like, I don't know. I would have, I would have tried to stay up there a little bit more. Cause like, I think you recognize that, like right off the bat. But that initial, like, oh, maybe I need to. That that initial miss was like. I think the two hits I got were on that shoulder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, on the inverse of that, uh, she has a tendency to arm hunt quite a lot. Um, just from watching these fights and from fighting you last night on the ditch. Um, so if you throw for that, you really got to cover your arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was what I was going to bring up with Fezzik. Like that computing thing all together. I was fighting him last night, first time I've ever fought him. You know, met him, whatever. But like, uh, I mean, that's something that immediately like picked up in my mind. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, 
probably see some of the stuff that he was throwing last night. You know, so, uh, yeah. and yeah, it happened. You know, so, but at the same time, I was still able to pick up other tales and things like that that went along with that after, you know, kind of engaging and watching it again. You were pretty unwilling to open. That's very dangerous. A lot of people don't want to believe this, but as you move up in levels, right, and you start fighting the higher level fighters, if you're never willing to open, that's a horrible tell for someone because they know that they can safely throw stuff at you and you're only going to try to counter punch them, right? So you can't, you can't only be a counter punch fighter. Like you have to be willing to like have some opening shots and, and do things out of the cut. You know, it, it doesn't mean you have to be a press fighter all the time, but it does mean that at times you have to vary your offense, right? Switch gears on them and be able to open. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're, if you're always, if you're always uh, Opening and pressing, 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 that's also bad, right? Because they know you're going to do that and they can formulate your plan based on that. So you kind of have to be able to switch back and forth uh, and be very fluid in your game. Uh, all right, next piece. I need a volunteer, single volunteer, someone who's fought there. You already fought, yeah? I already fought, yeah. Okay. You want somebody who hasn't fought? No, he fought. Here we go. Hang out. You can go hang out and watch those guys in two swords for a while if you want. Okay. All right. All right. What we are going to do is we're going to make a plan for who wants to fight them. It can be anybody out there. How about you? Do you want to fight him? I'm fine. Okay. So we're going to make a plan for him to fight. Remember things. So what should he do? Based on what we've seen, we've only seen three fights. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of time. Um, normally, I like to do like five or six fights, but uh, we saw three. So, what should he do? Uh, don't say it too loud. Uh, so, my thought process on it is: you need to try to fake shots that you used in the last three exchanges with your opponent, especially if he critiqued them. So I would, the ones that are going to stick in his so The one that worked and what you obviously like doing and, and looking for is stabbing him with that Quiet. effect with that and hold then on, hit him on, in the on. shoulder. Well, like, I, I've got a, uh, Fucking cheater. I've got a sub out. So if somebody else wants to take my spot, I've got to go handle an issue. Um, I may or may not make it back in time to finish the class. Okay. Right, everybody, thank you guys very much. Oh, yeah. Appreciate Thanks it. for volunteering. All right. Meet him. You're the man over there now. So we're planning against you now. scared him from coming out. <laughs> the plan was too good. Okay, so Ryan's going to fight him. What should, we what should we do against him? You should. You should, you, should, you should bait this side open so he goes to stab you with that. So instead, instead, you need to plan. You need to plan out your approach based on the fact that he knows that the advice we gave him was to pretty much, you know, plan to fake, you know, what he knows. So you need to play like that. When he fought, he seemed really. He didn't want to engage. He was waiting yeah. for open oh, shots okay. this side. This side, he wasn't throwing at all. He got dumped on on that yeah. side a lot. He never threw. And the only time he did throw was with the yelling and the stab with the board it side. Expect some different stuff, but also know that it's probably going to be in that same rail, realm. I, I think. Like, a lot as well. The, yeah, the vibe that I got when I was fighting him, I don't think he's going to. He's going to want you to pressure him. Uh, so I would try to force him to open on you, and I think you'll be able to count. Because I don't think he's going to be able to, once he does his little two, three step plan, I don't think he's going to be able to transition into something safe after that. So if you can just like make him come to you, I don't make think he's going to you and then you not know it. The plan has to go all the way through how many? Oh. Swords I hit. Swords I hit. Okay. Yeah. So you make him come to you, and then he swords I hit. So I'm going to make some. <coughs> Step into him for a second and then I'm going to slide back, right? Suddenly I'm surprised. See, maybe it'll come to you, right? And then step back, step back, step back. As soon as, as, soon as you see that come forward heavy, then you that way a minute. Dinosaur is actually a little bit of a Or if you throw like this, you're walking with you. That's better. Yeah. Uh, okay. If you, if you throw your money.
funny if you put your handle into the like the crease of where his down stick comes into his board, he'll literally just break it into your hand and it'll stiff his entire head. Right. If you just throw like that, you'll it's cross block it. That he completely avoids that success of what we was right. talking about yeah, before it was off. You might yeah. want to, you might want to say play against, play against the fact that we already gave him the if it's, if it's not that stab, what he's waiting on is for you to open up so he feels comfortable. Okay, I'm safe, I can hit him. So you might want to throw something like where you're not necessarily trying to hit him, but he needs to feel like you're trying to hit him. You need to return slowly. And that's where the middle chess game plays in, too, because like, then you get into the situation of, well, I just went over there, and they know what I told them, yeah. so you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to fucking throw the shit that I was told not to throw. Yeah, exactly. But I know that he knows. So, that I know. I would, throw some, I would throw some shots at his hand, like and you're then trying your to hit him, slowly <laughs> come back. <laughs> Fights. We'll see what he does. Like, no Alright, buddy! <laughs> this is a pretty cool activity. Hold, bro, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty good for a while there. This is Fighting the Royce. Who wants to fight him? I'll fight. 
You're fighting. Okay, perfect. Xander is fighting. Are you going to read on him? Whatever we do, we're getting hit. We're all getting hit. All right. All right. So, um, what what would you guys suggest? And then I'll throw some suggestions because we didn't really get to see him fight three. What would you guys suggest? Uh, is he going to use fourteen? Because I can tell you, goal posts. He's probably pretty vulnerable to his dad. Uh, he has a wheel a lot, so he's probably pretty protective of his swords on him. Uh, he does find Isaac and Eric all the time, so yeah, he at least is aware of that. How can we capitalize on that, do you think? Faking. Yeah, you use it for a fake. Alright. He do big, he, like, saying fake the uh, sword side hip, he could loop it over, throw over top. Alright, how would you fake sword side hip? I just don't know how you would fake it. Just throw over. Okay, I'm just gonna faint you. And then when you do the sidestep, alright, and then this one. Ah, okay. There's something up here. Yeah, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah too flat, so. Okay. Like, your, your setup's good. Make sure I get there. Your hand gets down here. And step. You fight right foot forward? Ah, uh, yeah. That's fine. We can do right foot forward. You're gonna have to slide your back foot out there. Right here, you're gonna have to when the shield comes down. So, as you, as you throw your face, like slide your foot up, right? Watch my back foot. As you throw your fix, slide your foot up, right? And then when your shield goes down, as your shield goes down, step. step over the top, right? Easy. So, okay. I think that's a good plan A. What else do we need to do? Um, so, if that plan A works, then you can run that as like plan A.10. <laughs> you know, uh, so basically trying to open up with that again, but knowing that it's probably going to fail. Yeah. And then meeting that into something else, which would be a board side hit rep, most likely. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I would if go high, step high. Up, Honestly, like if, high we're, high. if we're talking about really gaming someone now, yeah. um, you're going to do that same, like, kind of step, step, right, 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 right here. Huh. Right, so now he's done this, and he's like, oh, crap, this happened before. Up. Uh, right back down to what we originally were targeting for, right? High, low, high. Low, high, low. Low, high, low. Be your B plan, especially if your A plan works, you can use the B plan, right? Um, we can have one more, and I think that C that'll be the, that'll be enough. What else do you think? Oh, okay. We need to stand. Hold on. What do you think we should try? You fight him all the time. What do you think we should try? Well, he um he does really he doesn't really tend to deviate from the center line. So it makes it a little easier. Can he only moves forward and back? Not all the time, but that's his tendency if you freak him out. So if he charges at you, he's probably going to throw like three shots. It's going to be like the, the hip wrap or like the high cross or the board side cross. So like if you if you know what he's throwing, it makes it easier to like counter him because it's like those three shots. So what will we punish him with then? Depends on what he's throwing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So give him some. Give, give him. Give him some. Yeah. Give him a look. Right. So, give him, give him show up like a little bit low, and, and then invite him to move in on you. Remember how we invite him to move in on us? Put your shoulders a little bit down, and then as he goes to move in and throw, again, we'll probably look to step right, and we'll just bring our shoulder all the way up. So, I'm coming to you, you throw my shoulder, I raise up, and then I look here. Here, I would do this, right? Because you brought your shoulder high, you're worried about me going high. If you're worried about this, you brought your shoulder low, I would just throw it. And you have two options there, but it's get him to throw here, and then whatever I'm going to throw here, or I'm going to go here, you don't want to be fine. All right? That's what's in the Kind of cool. All right. Well, the computing thing is now you know she's a rat. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll spill the beans on her own. So. I made her do it. I made her do it. Yeah. Right!
sound good. Okay, it looked like a fish. Yeah, it was a lift. <laughs> Just put it down. <laughs> I know why I do that. I don't know why you guys do that. Adjusting and changing and adapting all the time and forcing me to do the same kind of thing is highly entertaining to me, and I'll I'll want to like continue to, to fight with them. And it, you know, that's, I mean, I fight Harry all the time. We've been fighting for 28 years, 29 years, right? And uh, we always have like a back and forth. And I've seen all of it at some point in time, surely over the years. But just what he's bringing that night and how he's doing things differently always makes it a fun fight, right? So. Okay, how should we approach this fight? Um, in all of his fights previously, he all he did take one, two, pause, one, two, pause, one, two, pause. All of his combos were just two, and there was always a reset, repetitively <laughs> as a combo. Uh -huh. And it was always, it was never two same, it was always a tick-tock, uh -huh. and it was either high-low or high-high. 
and but it was always in twos, which uh -huh. means that to capitalize on that, it's talk, talk. You know he's going to return. You catch both the blocks. You can easily re aggress while he is resetting and try to catch him and yeah. caught up so in the pattern. Wanting to try to bait like that TikTok, right? So probably yeah. like an exposed shoulder or something if, like that. Yeah, his high high TikTok. If you just don't move, yeah. it's not going to hit you. Yeah, you don't even really need to. He's going <laughs> to throw it. Like he's going to throw it too. Yeah. So he's either going to throw like left right or he'll probably throw like high low into your board. Mm -hmm. I mean your sword side. So you know as long as you are at the appropriate range where they don't hit or you just slip to the right to block it or you can sort of block it if you really want to. And then what he's saying is when he's done with that, like he kind of resets to do it again, then press on. You press on him then. And I would I think that the shield side is the right place he to has go. a really Exposed shoulder. Yeah, that's on yeah. Side. yeah that's that's like I watched that when I was watching him fight. Yeah. I'm like, I've seen that. It's like, hella, hella. So, when you throw his board, he'll, he'll try to slice the picture on. He does yeah. that a lot at yeah. so yeah. home. Well, yeah. So, I'm thinking probably if that's going to be the case, then with the aggress, throwing something close behind the board. Yeah. That way he does respond to that, you know, chop. Yeah. And then try to throw up by. He was doing something with his feet where he was uh, out in yellow to red, where he was resetting around this with this stuff, but yeah. it's always a crest off of this. So is he actually resetting his stance? I'm not sure he was, but I'm wondering what happens if you, if you come at him and he's coming combo. back over here. Gotcha. So I don't know. We'll out combo the combo. When, he, when he's coming back over, he's getting back where he's comfortable. You'd be better off catching him when he's going to the other side. Because he's going to the other side to give you the illusion that he's moving laterally. When yeah, he's, not. he's not. He moves over and says, look, look at me, but then he moves back, and that's where he gets that's, his from. I mean, that's what I thought. I didn't see him aggress then with that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah so, um, if he does that to get you to turn, yeah. and then comes back in from the other side, because he fights close to where I fight. Yeah. Yeah. So, if he just picks press him. Okay. Press him when you're doing a lateral move. That's not a lateral move. This will be like one, how you open for plan A, and two, how you open to open without letting him do anything, right? So plan A is like you're going to counter off of him opening, right? Yeah. So what they're saying is you need to throw something protected because he might slice at your arm. But if you've let him combo, you don't need to do that because he's already combo just pulling back. So I would just... You know, come back to about right here, get to right here. If he throws his combo to you, just go throw a combo at me. Right? Right. And then come here and then right down here. Wow. Tight though. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go out too wide, he's going to block it, right? So it needs to be this real tight one. Can you throw that? Is that a shot you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. okay. Um, the second piece, um, I would just aggress on him before he has a chance to do anything. But they say he wants to count on. That's what I was. Yeah. <coughs> he tries to throw that. When he throws that, I can slot down if he crosses. So, like, if I go here and throw behind the board and he tries to slice down. Slice the your arm? Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm, actually, I might just try to throw fake behind the board then. We'll see. I would just throw something like this, right? And then get back to this spot again, probably, right? Get about right, right here. Hit that board. Chop the arm, chop the arm, chop the arm. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, here, chop the arm. Mm -hmm. Over the top, right? And if he goes what you did and raises his board, right? And you'll have to, you'll have to see this in transition, right? Chop the arm, right there. Chop the arm, right there. Gotcha. He raises, he raises his board, we go low. He lowers his board, we go high. Two options, one shot. You just have to see in that step, you'll see. And then you can go the other direction. That's the view that opens. So we're just like we're tapping right here, and then we're like, oh, okay. yeah. that's B. They go low, we go high. What else? Give him one more. What else can we get him to do, do you think? If he doesn't press enough, you have to. If he was really mobile, you were really trying to be close. You could try to spin? Yes. I'd spin. Yeah. Five I think three. so. I can spin, but I'm not a like press spin. fighter. Like, I like to press, but I don't usually, but I can throw a spin. All his engagements, like, he's right at range where he's fighting you with the last inch of his stick yeah. to get his face. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can easily go from like this and then just transition to a board. And then what do you do? 
I like this so far. What are you going to do? Well, the thing is, is you say he's doing this right here. So uh -huh. if I go from this uh -huh. to this, he's probably going to try to go up on my outside. Uh -huh. I'll just keep in with him. Okay. And work around. Down in his, yeah. His butt. Okay. He's That's carrying fun. a punch. All right. So if you tap that side of the punch, it'll hold on that. Okay. It's not a punch. Now that, it just like, it's, it's, it's a little punch. thinner. Oh, okay. It's a little thinner than some, like so it kind of looks like that. All right. We're ready. Yeah. We'll, we'll edit and post. Dynasty Warriors theme song. You gotta come up the runway, dude. You missed the runway. Get out of my way. James. Yes. 20 minutes, man, for the next one. Are we done? Yeah. Are we supposed to be done? Okay, this will be the last one. Go so wrap it up. 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We just have a lot of people. I know, I'm just telling you that. Thanks, Bill. No. 